So my first gig in full sports, besides an internship I had done before, was uh, at Fox Sports Net on a nightly highlight show called The Final Score. And I had to watch every game possible, golf, NASCAR, hockey, basketball. No matter what, even if I didn't like it, NASCAR. I had to watch it and log what happened. And like in NASCAR, I was like, they turned left. <laughs> Someone crashed. Uh, but you had to log what happened. And, and it started out writing, and then it became computers. And that way, anytime they wanted to go back to the tape of whatever game it was, they could find the home run they were looking for, the touchdown they were looking for. I don't know if you guys have done that stuff before but I started out doing that and it was the perfect job to start with because I was forced to watch so much stuff that I never would have sat and watched all of and I had to listen to the broadcasters call the games and figure out what was compelling and interesting and who I didn't like and why. Um, I gradually got to be an associate producer for the show so I got to cut opens and teases and do a little more of that but I was still doing a lot of cutting and writing copy for the anchors so deciding which parts of the game were going to go in a highlight and what the anchor people would say about it. It was a great lesson because if I messed up I made the anchors look bad. That's a problem, right? If you're counting on other people to help you put together a half hour show of nonstop highlights you can't write them all yourself so you have to hope the people that are doing the work for you do it well. Um, and it was also a three times nightly live show on the East Coast, Mountain, and West Coast, or Midwest, and actually four. East Coast, Midwest, Mountain, West Coast. So every time we had an opportunity to either succeed greatly or fail massively. So it was really useful to watch that process of a show being made instantly. There was not a lot of downtime to figure things out. You had to be right kind of the first time, or at least you know, know who to ask if you weren't sure. Uh, so I've been with ESPN 1000 for, I think, four and a half years or so. And um, I briefly hosted a WGN show called Chicago's Best that's still on now. And um, did that for a couple months, but I got, an, I got an offer from ESPNW and I just wanted to put all of my eggs in one basket to misuse that cliche, because you're not supposed to do that, I suppose, but I did. Um, and now I write a weekly column for W and I do some other video and writing stuff for them. Um, I'm on the air every day during Carmen and Yurko doing updates. I also do some hosting and fill-in hosting at, at the station. And I just started doing a lot more TV stuff. So I filled in on Numbers Never Lie seven or eight times, um, hosting with either Jamal or Michael or whatever other fill-in if they're both on vacation. Um, I just did the Oberman show for a second time last week, which is pretty cool. Um, and I'm just sort of continuing to plug along. And it's funny because there's people, um, Specifically one guy who really bugs me because I don't know how his website always comes up so high in searches But my mom will google me and she'll be like why is that guy's website still there? I'm like I don't know mom, but it's like people I hate Sarah Spain and <laughs> and I don't know how he got his website so high in the search results, but um, He you know, there's still people like him who think that my Super Bowl stunt was a, you know some sort of attention whore move or was not something kosher in reality, I was a huge fan. I really wanted to go to the game, and I got creative. And for the most part, people seem to think it was a pretty great idea, and they're kind of jealous they didn't think of it since I got tickets and hotel and airfare and everything, and I got to go to the game, and they lost, and I cried a lot and it sucked. My ESPNW job was completely born of social media. I was doing the blog for Chicago Now, which was pretty successful for the Chicago Now medium, which isn't saying much because it's a million blogs on different topics, and they're not they don't get a ton of great space anywhere where people, people can see them. Um, so I was continuing to plug along and I said at least if I apply for jobs I can point to something I'm working on every day. Which was really important too because it paid me almost nothing so it could have been easy for me to do nothing for that three months while I looked for a job and instead I made myself wake up every day and sit at the desk and write blog stories and put stuff out there so I was continuing to work and keep myself you know, fresh for whenever someone would come around looking for a job. So um, I did that and uh, the guy who at the time was running all of ESPN.com and mobile was following me on Twitter. I didn't know who he was, but he followed me for about three months and was reading all my stories and all my tweets and stuff. And then after that, out of the blue, contacted me and said, we're starting a new like, element of the ESPN national website, ESPNW, and I wanted you to come interview for it. So, I mean, kind of important to make sure that you <laughs> present yourself well. Don't rip on any companies you might want to work for, even if you don't already work for them. Um, I actually had a story that was negative about Jay Mariotti when I was just blogging for like nowhere that no one that no one read, yeah. and I ended up getting a connection that wanted to s hook me up with SB Nation. And the first thing that the person said, "Oh, I see you're from Chicago. Just have to ask. You know, we just hired Jay Mariotti, so you know, 
a, I did a Google search of your bo both of your names and I'm like, oh, I can just delete that, no problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, unless your MO is going to be that you're a jerk and you take on everybody. But I mean, there's people that that's there, they take on everybody, but you got to own up to it and you got to be probably not working for ESPN because they have a rule that you are not allowed to disparage other media from outside, from other places. 